Mr. Chairman. Thank the gentleman. Now recognize the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Gowdy, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I want to read a, uh, a regulation. I would ask all the panelists to pay attention. It's a little tedious, but it's important. If new or unanticipated threats or hazards are discovered by either the government or the contractor, or if existing safeguards have ceased to function, the discoverer shall immediately bring the situation to the attention of the other party. That is, that's a regulation. Uh, Mr. Hess, Mr. Gianetta, were there also contractual obligations in this realm between you and the government? There are. Uh, and they would be what? Similar to that? Notice? A notice provision? I don't have an immediate recollection of the exa exact text, but it, it is similarly worded. Okay. I think it's helpful sometimes to define terms, uh, particularly for those of us that are liberal arts majors uh, and don't deal with this. What is a new or unanticipated threat or hazard? Mr. Hess. Uh, that would be a, an, an indication of compromise of a system or, or a failure of any of the the system protections. Oh, so when Chairman Chaffetz was having a difficult time getting answered to that question because the focus was on the loss of personal information, that's really not what that phrase means. It's just a threat or hazard. It doesn't actually have to be a loss, does it? Uh, not, not the way that I would define it. Me either. What about existing safeguards have ceased to function? What does that mean? Mr. Hess? Uh, sorry, I, I, it's pretty explanatory. explanatory. The, the it did strike me as being self-explanatory. It did. Uh, Mr. Giannetta, is it self-explanatory to you? Existing safeguards have ceased to function? Yes. Now, here's the really tough question, and I'll let both of you weigh in on this one because it is tough. What does the word immediately mean? Without delay. Without delay. Mr. Giannetta, do, is there another meaning that you're familiar with? I think that's a good definition. All right, so you had both a contractual obligation with the government and there's a regulatory obligation that if new or unanticipated threats or hazards are discovered by either the government or the contractor or if existing safeguards have ceased to function, the discoverer shall immediately bring the situation to the attention of the other part. Ms. Archuleta, um, I had heard this morning about a March 2014 data breach. Did I hear that right? Yes, sir, you did. And when did you bring that breach to the attention of either uh, Mr. Hess or Mr. Gianetta? And you are welcome to turn on your microphone or else bring it closer to you. Um, I would have to get that information back to you. I don't have it in my notes. Uh, perhaps Ms. Seymour would know, but if not, we'd get that information back to you. Well, do you know if it was immediately? I, w I, would, uh, I would expect that it was immediate. Well, let's find out. Ms. Seymour, do you know? Uh, no, sir, I don't, but I don't think that we, uh, I certainly don't think that we immediately notified our contractors of a breach to our network because at that time we did not uh, uh, have any um, question as to whether it was affecting them. It was to our network at that time. Uh, Mr. Hess, Mr. Giannetta, is that your understanding that they were under no duty to bring that to your attention? Not all at once. It's your contractual language, and you're looking at the regulation. Do you think you should have been notified because of the March breach? Absolutely. Well, why? Because uh, I just heard one person say she didn't know, and another say it was really none of your business. So why should you have been notified, despite the plain language of the regulation and the contractual language? Why do you think it was important that you be notified? so that we could take appropriate or more appropriate actions to protect data. Were you notified? I was not. Were you notified immediately? No. Huh. What do you have to say about that, Ms. Seymour? I believe that that's accurate, sir. Well, I'm, I'm with you there. I guess my question is why? Why, despite the plain language of the contract and the plain language of the regulation, why did you not immediately notify the contractors? We worked with uh, DHS and partners and uh, to understand the, uh, comp the potential compromise to our system uh, so that we could was make DHS, proper notifications. Was DHS one of your contractors? 
Uh, no, sir. Well, I didn't think so, which that doesn't really help me understand the regulation because it says contractor. It doesn't say DHS. So why didn't you notify the contractor? At that time, we were still investigating what had happened in our network. What does the word immediately mean to you? Without undue. Did you do so? No, sir, we did not. Does the regulation say uh, as soon as you figure out what happened or after you talk to DHS? I, it, that is not in my version of the regulation. Is it in yours? I have not read that regulation, sir. No, you know why you haven't? Because that one doesn't exist. The one that says notify DHS or try to figure it out. The only one that exists says to immediately notify the contractor, and you're telling me you didn't do it, and my question is why? I can't answer that question. Who can? I will take that back and get you. To whom will you take it? I believe I, I would take it back to my staff to see if we have processes in place. Do you think it's staff's responsibility that? to notify the contractor? We have processes in place for um, making notifications when we find these. Who's things. ultimately responsible for that process? Who failed to meet the contractual and regulatory obligations? I would have to read that regulation, sir. I'm not familiar with it. I just that. read it. I'd be happy to read it, and I'd like to read the full context of it. Oh, you think the context is different from what I just read? I would want to read the context. How about the contract? The contract have you read the contract? Have. I have read most of the parts of the contract, sir. Well, I can't speak for the chairman, but my guess is that he and the other members would be really interested in who failed to honor both the letter and the spirit of the contractual obligation and the regulatory obligation. With that, I would yield back. Thank you. The gentleman will now recognize